Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 187 of Category 5 Technology TV. It is so nice to see you. It is Tuesday, the 19th of April, 2011. Yeah, where's the time going? <laughs> it's literally spring and we had snow. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Wasn't that great? I'm Robbie Ferguson. <laughs> I'm Crystal Watts. Nice to see you. Always nice to see you too, I guess. I guess. <laughs> so, how about we have a look at uh, what's coming up in the newsroom later? Be great. All right, so the makers of Star Wreck are raising money for a new film in an interesting way. Oracle plans to continue development at open, or of Open Office, but strictly as a community project. Google Video to vanish from interwebs at the end of the month. FTP is 40 years old and still transferring files like a transfer protocol in its 20s. Cisco is shutting down the flip video camera business. Oh. And will offer you a new way to pimp out your starship with real life laser weaponry. So stick around and we'll fill in these stories in about half an hour. Cool. I just happen to have a starship. Not really. <laughs> not shocking, actually. <laughs> this, this is not quite a cardigan. I, was it supposed to be? This t tonight's I failed. the it first annual... Buttons. Can't card cardigans button? Yeah, they can button. Look it up on Wikipedia. Well, then it's a cardigan. Is that... Is that, you're, is that you're not wearing a cardigan. <laughs> of course I had to say cardigan, it. <laughs> cardigan, cardigan, cardigan. Oh. Come on. Who else is wearing a cardigan with me? If you've got your cardigan tonight... <laughs> Pop me an email. I want you to take a picture with your cell phone or your iPhone oh, wow. or whatever it is, your digital camera. Take a picture, email live at category5.tv. I want to see you wearing your cardigan tonight. And I will give you 100 <laughs> viewer points just for precipitating. Precipitating? Participating. Oh. <laughs> I just, that was a purposeful mispronunciation. Are you sure? Yeah. You're just just for, for those of you in the chat room. <laughs> hmm. Bowser. All right. Lots going on tonight. We are going to be looking at, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's part six or part seven of our uh, feature on web development. Well, it's part seven. It's getting up there. Technically. Part six oh, kind I of, see, cause of last week. was a little bit uh, yeah, choppy as far as how that went. Mm. We'll talk a, a little bit about that and, uh, and where things are at. We do have, uh, Loudon Owen is joining us from Eye for Eye. Uh, they are a, a company who... Uh, took Microsoft to court and actually won uh, in a patent lawsuit where Microsoft had infringed on their patent and uh, they were awarded in Texas $290 million and we're going to be talking to their chairman uh, in a few minutes. Uh, he's very, very busy because they were just in Supreme Court with Microsoft yesterday morning and uh, so we're expecting his call sometime this, this uh, hour, so looking forward to talking to him. Uh, all right, we can uh, check out the chat room, say hi to everyone over there. Category5.tv is the place to uh, say hello to us. Nice to see everybody. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> well, hello there, neighbor. Oh, we were talking just before the show about how I should do some different accents during every broadcast. That's not even close so to Mr. Rogers. Was this one? <laughs> I was. <laughs> Good day. I'm the Australian uh, Mr. Rogers then. A little better. Still, Still yeah. scared. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's all about the cardigan. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, and if you have no clue what we're talking about cardigans, it rhymes with partying. Did you know that before you just said that? Was that planned? Yeah, that was planned. Is that a happy accident? <laughs> <laughs> Find out more at cat5.tv slash Tuesday. It's Tuesday. You should celebrate by going over there. We are on, well on our way to 1,000 million views at cat5.tv slash Tuesday with our hot new dance video. 586 views so far. That is so close to our goal. We are so very close to our goal. <laughs> it gets better every time. Better every time. <laughs> Go get your cardigan. Sit down with a mococo and enjoy the video. Fabulous. 
Uh, any questions right off the top uh, in the chat room, we welcome your questions. Category5.tv if you're on Freenode. Uh, you can also catch us uh, in the Category5 chat room uh, on Freenode. Just kind of give you the chance to say hey, and if you have any particular questions right off the bat. I'll mention uh, while we're waiting for, uh, for our call-in from Loudon. Um, last week we had some pretty major issues with, uh, with our broadcast system, as you know. And it's it's a hard time for a show that uh, that doesn't charge for its services when uh, when something goes wrong that requires uh, hardware replacement. Uh, we did get a quote. We got two quotes actually, three quotes if you count me going to the Mac store. <laughs> you didn't actually. Because I actually do that. I went to the Mac Apple website. It was Apple.com, <laughs> and I went through the store process and I got the quote from. Is that just so you could rub it in my face? It was really expensive. <laughs> For what it was, so I actually took what I got from the Apple quote and got a quote from Dell and HP to see what it was going to cost, and and uh, we're, we are looking at uh, an expense of almost three thousand dollars Canadian uh, in order to get things up and running to the point where we need to be, uh, and it is because of our main broadcast system, which we've been using for the past about four years, is unfortunately uh, at its end of life. And that means, you know, it's it's at the point where I've talked to several people and said, what do we do? Do we, you know, try really, really hard to diagnose the, the many different problems that we're experiencing? Uh, it is a hardware issue. Do we, you know, do we replace individual parts only to find that we've put $1,500 into this and we're no closer to having it fixed? So uh, everybody's recommendation does seem to be it's best just to replace the hardware at this point. It's It's failing or failed. And so that's where we're at. So, uh, but in the meantime, uh, we've been able to get online with a temporary system uh, by stripping down the amount of things that we're able to do. We can't do green screens. We've only got one camera, things like that. Um, so, uh, so I'd encourage you. You know, I don't usually ask for donations, but I do encourage uh, if you have the means to do so. Uh, Category Five TV welcomes your donations to uh, to help us uh, to afford the replacement of that server. You can go over to cat5.tv slash c, and that'll take you over to the uh, donation system. Nice to see everybody joining us in the chat room. Uh, nice to see Hillary, who is here with us tonight. Cool. And uh, yeah, I, I'm hoping that we hear from our, uh, our gent from hi for i I wonder if we should get into our, our series and, uh, and come back to it when he calls. Probably do that, eh? Yeah, we could probably yeah. manage that, I think. It's just a little curveball for the <laughs> evening. Keep you on your toes, anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it'll be a Skype interview. So cool. Thanks, everybody in the chat room. Jot. Thanks, Chris Reich, who says, People of Earth, greetings. And also, Robbie F. <laughs> Cheers. Nice to see everybody. <clears throat> okay. Uh, another comment about just when it comes to supporting the show and things, if you're not able to support us financially, um, there are banner ads on our site. Do click on those. If you use something like Adblock Plus, uh, please also um, add an exception for Category5.tv as well as uh, Play.Cat5.tv. That would be great. And then that way our banner ads will come up. They're not intrusive, <laughs> and it helps us when our banner ads come up. There we go. That's my spiel. Okay. Thanks. That was a good spiel. Thanks. That's good. At the same time, I'm also clicking on Skype contacts <laughs> and things, and hoping the interview comes in. Uh, but in the meantime, as we wait for that, uh, let's jump into uh, web development number seven, as we continue on in our series. Cat5.tv slash webdev is the, uh, the site that you want to visit. And from there, now we didn't get too far with our files last week, so I didn't, uh, I didn't make any uploads to, uh, to last week's uh, folder at this point. I will. Uh, there will be files for episode number 186. Unfortunately, due to the corrupt files and things, there was <laughs> a lot of other things on my mind. But uh, let's take a look at where we left off. Looking at our style sheet... We were working on our left area of the header. I'm going to bring up index.php. And we're going to continue the development of this website that uh, Krista and I have been working on for the past uh, seven weeks. 
So, wow. It's yeah. been seven weeks already? It's been seven weeks. And that was your first Holy night, smoke. so Krista's been with us for seven weeks. Because I've put up with me for a long time. Yeah. That's impressive. Put up with you. <laughs> she's so hard to deal with. <laughs> a lot meaner before the show. <laughs> oh, she's terrible before the show. Throwing things and stuff. and That's probably why the server's broken. You've that been kicking be. it and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's okay. I'll be the scapegoat. She hasn't really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Talk amongst yourselves for just one moment. <laughs> and the reason for that is because we do have this interview that is coming in this evening. And, um, and so, so I need to actually be clicking around here at the same time. Here we go. Hello. Hello. This is Category 5 TV. We're live on the air. Okay, it's, uh, it's loud in here. Oh, hi, Loudon. Okay, good. Hi. Good to hear your voice. Uh, it, we, uh, we didn't get a chance to get loud in a sound check, so Loudon, I'll just get you to give me a quick sound check while we're, uh, while we're on the air here. Sure. One, two, three, four, I, four, I. There you go. Do you have video, sir? I do. That'd be fantastic. Let me just see what I can do here. This is uh, Loudon Owen, who is joining us. He's the chairman for I4I, a software company in Toronto. We're going to find out all about, uh, about them in just a moment here. How's the video? There we are. It's coming in pretty good. Uh, Great. Nice to see you. Uh, it's, uh, now, we're, we're, just, we're just getting started with the show, so we'll just kind of throw right over to the interview here, Loudon. Um, and one of the things that... Uh, Obviously, we'd like to, to establish is some of our viewers are w wondering what is I for I software, uh, or I for I, I should say, and uh, what is it that brought you to the place where, you know, back in 2007, you are uh, filing a, lo a rather substantial lawsuit against Microsoft, probably the, uh, right. the well, biggest software company in the world. Sure. I, I for I is a, it's a software company based in Toronto. Um, the company has been a leader for many years in structuring unstructured data. And we have a patent which was issued by the United States Patent and Trademark Office, the USPTO, and uh, issued in 1998. And it's affectionately referred to as the 449 patent. And our patent, uh, it, it became clear to us some years ago uh, that our patent may well be infringed by Microsoft. So. The next step for us was to get some assistance, look into it, and it culminated in litigation against Microsoft by I4I. Mm -hmm. We filed and, uh, in 07, and we received our judgment in 09, and it's now made its way all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. So uh, we, we see in the media and everything, Loudon, that uh, you're a small uh, development company or a small company in Toronto. How, about how big was your company before this all started? Well, that's interesting. First of all, we're not necessarily a small company. We're a, a very large company, but we're in our growth phase. I see. In the early days. So when they say like small, they're probably themselves. saying small compared to the giant that you're up against. Uh, unquestionably. Yeah. And the company at earlier iterations and earlier stages had reached about 150 people. Hmm. Um, we had to downsize, so we're about 30 people today, but we work with an extensive group of systems integrators and partners around the world. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, it certainly is, by any measure, in comparison to Microsoft, a smaller company. Yeah, for sure. Uh, compared to Microsoft, uh, you'd say that about pretty much any company that I can think of. Um, so after, now in 2009, we, we've all read about it came your, your first, uh, I guess you would say, a, a rather substantial victory in Texas. If you could tell us what, what exactly occurred there after you uh, started going through this process in 2007 to take Microsoft uh, to court and, and to, to get them to be accountable for their infringement on your, uh, on your patent. Well, I, I will give you a sort of snapshot as to what happened. Um, the first thing that happened was we had pre-trial as one does, and then the trial itself, we were victorious. 
in uh, in the federal circuit court, and it was based in Texas. Uh, we were given an award of damages of two hundred million dollars. Then there was a, a post trial hearing, and the damages were increased based upon what what they call in the U.S. enhanced damages based upon the conduct of Microsoft. And if right. you added together interest and um, uh, judgment interest and a variety of other factors, it, it grew to approximately $290 million. So it's a very substantial amount of money. Mm -hmm. But in addition, uh, we were granted an injunction against Microsoft using our technology in Word. So Microsoft appealed, it went to the appeals court. They appealed the appeal to the appeals court. Yep. Microsoft filed for a re-examination in the patent mm -hmm. office, and there was a very extensive re-examination, which uh, was successful for I for I. All of the uh, any aspect of the patent was re-examined. All of the claims yep. uh, were held to be valid. Microsoft has filed for a second re-examination that was denied by the patent office. They've appealed it, and then they went all the way to appeal this to the U.S. Supreme Court. So you're right; we were at the U.S. Supreme Court yesterday. So backing up just a little bit, Loudon, just to so that the viewers can further understand what exactly uh, has happened uh, with i for i and Microsoft. How did it, like, what is it that they did within Microsoft Word that actually infringed on, uh, on your software patent? And what exactly did your patent entail? Well, the, um, the, uh, what, what it's referred to uh, as custom XML within the Microsoft universe and within Microsoft Word. So really what we're talking about is custom XML was introduced in 2003 in Word. And that was after having very extensive discussions with i for i and being well aware oh, of really? who the company is and what the patent was and what it represented. Yeah. And then in 2007, in Word 07, um, it was introduced across the board. So it became a uh, uh, integral to what Microsoft was trying to do in enabling Word uh, to be this great powerhouse going forward right. and for helping people structure unstructured data. And they tried to and do what happened. They Sorry, we, we realized that there was an infringement. You yeah. never know if there's infringement until you actually see the source code. Right. So That's hard. we were, uh, and Microsoft, not surprisingly, doesn't offer people a chance to see their source code. Right. So we had to go to court. We had to start the action, and then during the uh, during the case, we had access. We didn't, but experts had expert, uh, access to the source code, and they were able to see where the uh, uh, the custom XML. Um, uh, components and were able to certainly to the jury satisfaction uh, were able to confirm that Microsoft was indeed infringing they were also held to have willfully infringed meaning they right. knew about us they knew about the patent and it was done uh, willfully so with you you having established this patent in 1998 that's correct and then they it was 1998 and they and listen, just so you know, unfortunately, I, I have to run very, very soon. I understand. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to probably have to take off in about a minute. Sure. Because we're still in the uh, it's aftermath It's a busy media time for you, I understand. Um, just before, before you have to go loud, and I'll just ask, yeah. just quickly, what would, you know, if Microsoft does win the Supreme Court battle that you have right now, or if you win, what, what kind of impact is that going to have on the patent system? And also, what can our viewers do to, to stand up for, uh, for the patents that, uh, that should be honored by the courts? Hey, that's a great question. I like the second part in particular, which, interestingly enough, nobody's asked so far. Hmm. Um, the first part is to the implications. They're very, very broad. And, you know, if in criminal law, somebody proposed changing the standard from beyond a reasonable doubt to, well, flip of the coin if you're guilty or not, I think you would see um, the upheaval that would cause would be momentous. And really what's happening here is Microsoft is trying to do the same thing in the patent world. Right. So what may seem like an arcane legal point about evidentiary standards, and it doesn't always get people's heart beating any faster, doesn't get their pulse racing, uh, but I think if you put it in the context of it's akin to changing criminal law from beyond a reasonable doubt to flip with a coin. So what Microsoft has asked the court to do, if you want to, as a defendant, invalidate a patent at trial, 
to have a standard which is now called preponderance. And that's really a coin toss. That's a, a feather lands on one side of the scales of justice. Right. And uh, then the patent is proven invalid. For a long time, well back in the 19th century, it's been a different standard, a stronger standard, which is clear and convincing evidence. So the implications from this are really quite, quite massive. In our view, and if you look not just at what we're saying, but what our supporters said, the people that filed briefs on our behalf, and that included inventors, innovators, universities, technology mm -hmm. managers, the venture capital community, large companies, small companies through the National Small Business Association, that's 150,000 small companies. And you look at the, the giants, um, 3M, GE, Pfizer, Merck, etc. all the companies have filed on our behalf. And then, of course, most noticeably, the U.S. government. The U.S. government has filed on our behalf. Right. So it's not just I for I saying this. It's all of these Amica supporters saying the implications are that it would reduce innovation. It would take away mm -hmm. the uh, enthusiasm of people to go out and disclose their inventions. There are two things to do when you invent something. Keep it a secret, rely upon it as a trade secret, or disclose it. And as your viewers will know, when you disclose it, you tell the world. Mm -hmm. So the world has access to your invention, to your technology, and now they can do whatever they want with its subject, very important subject, too, complying with the terms of the patent and the limited period of exclusivity. So if this change occurs, it's going to be far less useful having a patent because you're going to have a great deal of difficulty knowing if you can enforce it. Right, and people yeah. are going to have to think very long and hard if they should actually disclose. Mm -hmm. And I think in many, many cases, people will not disclose. Investors will not invest. People will not have the confidence to go forward and dedicate years of their life right. to inventing. And, and I wonder what that would do to the open advancing. source. So, I would think that the open sorry? source community with uh, open source patents on, on certain items of software that that could be detrimental as well. So what can our viewers yeah. do, Loudon, to, uh, to help innovators such as I4I uh, to be able to stand up to, uh, to the big players like Microsoft? Well, I think depending on religious persuasion, you can, certainly, uh, <laughs> you can certainly pray and hope that we win at the U.S. Supreme Court and hope that the law, which has been in place since the 19th century, continues. Right. Um, uh, a, a different approach to it, and I think a more direct approach is to be very watchful and wary and be in touch with the legislators anytime there's a potential change in patent law, and that's you know in the U.S. and Canada or elsewhere, and to ensure that the standards are respected and maintained. Mm -hmm. I think the third thing that can be done, and I have absolutely no objection, I don't know why people wouldn't simply contact the people that are on the other side of the debate and ask Microsoft how it is that they're somehow claiming uh, that this patent shouldn't be respected, considering they've cited the patent four times directly right. when they filed patent applications. They've cited it over 100 times they indirectly yeah, in exactly. patent applications. They put it in Word. I didn't hmm. think Microsoft was in the business of putting technology into Word that they didn't think was robust and powerful and added something hmm. for the consumers. So, you know, consumer power is a wonderful thing. And if the consumers whether it's uh, at the corporate or individual uh, stage, want to write to Microsoft and express their disappointment and their request that Microsoft uh, actually pay heed to other people's patents, I think that'd be great. That'd be much appreciated. Okay, Loudon. Well, thank you very much for your time. I know you're a very, very, very busy guy this week, uh, having to uh, be represented at... Uh, uh, at Supreme Court in the U.S. Uh, for I for I. Well, thank you for your. I appreciate your interest in this matter, and thank you to your viewers. Cheers. Take care, Loudon. Thank you. Thanks. This is Category Five Technology TV, and you'll find us online www.category5.tv. Uh, and uh, of course, I for I. Uh, I think it was I for I LP dot com. There's a lot of information there. Uh, that will give you uh, just a little bit more insight into what's actually going on with I for I uh, between them and Microsoft. But it's uh, to me, you know, I didn't realize that they, you know, a, an employee of 150 uh, staff at, at when this all started. But um, really, uh, you know, it still feels like a, a bit of a David and Goliath kind of thing where it's yeah. like they're really going after, uh, you know, Microsoft, like he said, knows that uh, this is their patent, but yet figures, oh, well. We're gonna do it anyway, <laughs> yeah. you know. And it's, it's like, what guy. are you thinking? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so stand up to them, and and it's good that uh, there are companies like I for I uh, that are that are standing up to them. And I hope that the courts will uh, will uphold 
um, their patent as well, uh, because that is, uh, you know, that's important moving forward for uh, everybody who holds a patent, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like my patent that I have on my supersonic mount mountain motorcycle that can fly in outer space. Yeah. That's, uh, anyone else have comments? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, well, you said something about you're going to teach us how to add a laser to our spaceship. I did. Cool. Super exciting. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So let's head over to the newsroom yeah, and find well, out uh, uh, find exactly out what what's, uh, what's going on then. All right. Well, this is my first newsroom experience, so you guys will have to <laughs> maybe bear with me and keep your laughing. So... Today, the makers of Star Trek and the Perkinine are planning a new sci-fi comedy movie, Iron Sky. The movie makers are using the crowdfunding model to raise a hopeful 300,000 euros within 60 days to fund the project, and in its first week, they have raised more than 2,697 euros. In their multi-platform fundraiser, at least seven crowdfunding services are being used, and they are posting the results for each of their chosen platforms, giving a real bird's-eye view as to which are the most effective services for fundraising. Indies Go Go is the first week of the fundraiser, has brought in over 1,200 euros for the project, whereas Flatter has brought in less than two euros. It will be interesting to see how things pan out in the end. To learn more about the project, watch a teaser video, or to get involved in the project's funding, visit ironsky.net. Oracle is turning Open Office into a purely community project and no longer plans to offer a commercial version of the suite it acquired when it, when it bought Sun Microsystems. The database giant made the announcement on Friday. Oracle Chief Corporate Architect Edward Scriven, Scriven said in a brief statement, we intend to begin working immediately with community members to further the continued success of Open Office, adding that Oracle will continue to strongly support the adoption of open standards based document formats such as the open document format. It's not clear, meanwhile, whether the document foundation has a future with its lib Libre? Libre. Li Libra? Libra? <laughs> Libra Office Software. Not when so open Libra. <laughs> Can't help but think about Sorry. it. Sorry. <laughs> when Open Office is back in the game, much will depend on what kind of governance model Oracle releases Open Office under. And before they opened, oh, sorry, before they bought YouTube in 2006, Google had its own video sharing site, cleverly titled Google Video. Ooh. In an email sent out to its users on Friday, Google Incorporated has revealed that they are entirely removing all hosted video from Google Video on April 29th, giving users who still have old videos on Google Video a chance to download their content before the service vanishes forever in May. If you have video hosted on Google Video, they have added a new download video button on the video status page, which will allow you to save your content before it's too late. Friday the 13th marks the frightful end of users' ability to download their videos as Google plans to completely shut down user access on that date. It comes as no surprise, but Google is off or encouraging users to forget Google Video ever happened and simply upload their content to YouTube saying, YouTube offers many video hosting options including the ability to share your videos privately or in an unlisted manner. File transfer protocol, most often referred to as FTP, turns 40 on Saturday. The network protocol was first proposed by Abhay Bhushan of MIT in April 1971 as a means to transfer large files between systems that made up Arpan Arpanet. <laughs> the celebrated <form>. Arpanet. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> okay. If you're gonna make fun okay. of me. No, I just stick, I, I literally stick these words in there just just to, to, just to phase you. Oh, yeah. Well. Like that name. I don't know who that was. I just grabbed it off Google. You know. Oh, aren't you nice? Just stuck it in there yeah. just to make you have to try to pronounce it. See what happens next week. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, check out this girl using FTP back in 1971. Oh. <laughs> nice. Anyways, um, I'm not going to say that again, but the celebrated forerunner of the modern internet. <laughs> The protocol required a minimum of handshaking and even more crucially was tolerant of temporary interruptions during long file transfer sessions, making it far more suitable for the job than anything else available at the time. Forty years later, the protocol's next big step will be the delivery of managed file transfer utilizing modern cloud technology. Frank Kenny at Network, Network Security Tools from Ipswich says the fundamentals of FTP are not going to change and that it will be enhanced using third-party tools but there will be no rewrite. He also believes FTP will carry on despite the other options available today. 
Reported by BBC News, Cisco Systems has said it is shutting down its flip video camera business and cutting 550 jobs as it overhauls its consumer's products unit. In recent years, Cisco, the world's largest maker of computer network and gear, has sought to diversify and move into the consumer market. Cisco bought Pure Digital Technologies, the maker of the flip camcorder, for $590 million in 2009. Philip Ailing, an analyst with Atlantic Equities, says they announced they are shutting it down, so that implies that they were unable to sell it. He adds it's disappointing they wouldn't be able to generate any proceeds from a sale of the business. Analysts have criticized Cisco for trying to do too much, and last week, Cisco chief John Chambers admitted the firm had lost its way and vowed to take bold steps to refocus. It mentioned that the company may be restructuring the consumer end of its business so that it can sell the division. From the They Did It First on Star Trek file, a high-energy laser filed from a U.S. warship off the California coast has successfully disabled a nearby boat, igniting its engines. Well, earlier models okay. of laser weaponry presented dangerous waste gases. Scientists have more recently developed solid-state lasers, which combine large numbers of compact beam generators, similar to LEDs which offers a much more environmentally friendly way to shoot Klingons and Romulans from the skies, or missiles, I guess, if you want to be realistic. <laughs> Peter Morrison from the Office of Naval Research says, there is still much work to do to make sure it's done safely and efficiently. They say the weaponized system will most likely be restricted to military vessels, so regrettably you won't be able to install one on your motorhome, which you've nicknamed the Enterprise. Get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions this week by John Preby and Nua. And if you have any news stories that you think are worthy of mentioning on air, email us at newsroom at category5.tv. For all of you in the Category 5 TV newsroom, I'm Krista Wells. Thanks, Krista. I'm serious. He, he looks like a cyclops, <laughs> doesn't he? I know it's just a laser, but I envision that this is his head with one eye, and he's smiling at me. And that is his arm of doom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's pretty fantastic. So if I see something funny installed on your home, like next week or in the next while, like that. Uh, on the, yeah, just on the roof? <laughs> yeah. <just> the <laughs> oh, boy. What you got there, Robbie? <laughs> <laughs> on my bike. <laughs> on the side of the bike. I, oh, I have wow. to bike. I have to pedal a little lopsided, but whatever. <laughs> That's good. Oh, dear me. Stay away from downtown Barry. That's fine. Definitely. <laughs> this episode of Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug at cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. Visit that site. Remember, that's a way that you can help support us. Also, Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso. You can go there to download the free multi, massive multiplayer online game. Fantastic. Hmm. Loads of fun tonight. We got lots to cover. So far, so good. No system crashes. This is good. Knock on wood. <laughs> we got our. All right. We we've opened up our stuff. We got that up just in time. We are up and good. There and we go. Ready to rock. I got my design up. I got my files. We're good to go. And we got to remember where we was at when we started crashing last week. Hokey doodle. You got really cool since last week. Where we was at. Yeah. Where we was at. Uh, you think that's pretty awesome? I thought so. Yeah, all right. That's all the cool people are saying these days. That's all they're saying. Let's bring it up. Demo.cat5.tv slash 004, I think, is where we were. There we are. We make great things happen. <laughs> so what we're going to do, next step. And again, you can get these files off cat5.tv slash webdev. And also you can get uh, a really great deal on website hosting. If you want to get uh, web hosting, you can go to our website, cat5.tv slash webdev. You'll see the coupon up at the top for a free domain, a year of hosting, and it's only 70 bucks US. It's so a really great deal. Out. Really great deal. Yeah. So looking at what, uh, you know, what we're doing with our website, we've got that uh, we make great things happen. And what I want to do is I want to move that in because if you look at the mock-up, See, it's not actually touching the edge of the area here with the wood grain. On our site, though, it is. Okay, so we're going to add some padding to that area. First of all, let's see what that area looks like. We're going to go into our style here, header left. 
I believe is where we left off. I made that little comment there. And that's how you comment in CSS, by the way, if you like. So I'm going to go border. You remember how I do this? Solid one pix red. And all that does is it just throws a little bit of a border around this particular element in my file so that uh, I can see where that element falls. OK. What I'm going to do, though, I'm going to make 005, just so we don't lose what we did last week. So go into uh, 005 with me on demo.cat5.tv. <coughs> Okay, so you'll see that that border actually extends the entire area here. So what we want to do is we don't want it to actually fill that whole area. We're going to bring up our mock-up here, and let's determine about how wide we want that area to be. So I'm using my rectangular marquee, and I'm just going to highlight to the right edge, so it's almost touching the uh, the photo there. And I can just go edit, copy, visible, edit, paste as new image, and that shows me up here now with that new image that is 534 pixels wide. I'm going to round up to 535. So in my CSS, I'm going to grab that area here, header left, and I'm going to go width colon 535 pix. Pix is for pixels. That's the measurement unit that we're using. In HTML, you could have just had 535, but in CSS, we have to have the px in order to specify what measurement we're actually using. I'm going to upload my CSS file and refresh. And you'll see that that red border is now only to there. OK, so now we can do a couple of different things. First of all, let's look at our mock-up. It looks like, Krista, we could, uh, we could probably just center the text, yeah? I think so. We could center it within that div, and then that's going to actually put it pretty much exactly where you want it to be. We've got that measurement, and if we center it in there, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be where we want it to be. So in our CSS, for that particular element that's header left, let's do this. Text align colon center. And that's going to take any text that's within that header left div, and it's going to place it in the center of that div. Refresh, and there we go. Okay, so next thing is we need to move it down because it's up too high for the way that our mock up is designed. Now you've got it pretty much vertically centered as well. What we can do is we can say, okay, we want it to be everything's in measurements, right? So I could just copy that. And I'm, again, I'm just using that to measure. I'm not actually needing to copy something, I just want to know how much space is that. That's 51 pixels high. So if I say I want to move that down 50 pixels, then that's fine. So there's a couple of ways I can do that. I could use relative positioning to move this down. Don't necessarily want to do that. I could pad the inner part of the div to move down the text. I could add a margin to the outside of the div to move the entire div down. Any one of those things is going to work. So let's try, for example, padding. Okay. What I can do is I can go padding top. And how, how many pixels did I say that was? 51. 51. So let's just do 50. You can be exact if you want to do the one pixel, but for me, I prefer to have nice clean numbers. OK, so now I've padded the top. So what I've done, remember, padding happens on the inside of the div. So you see the border is in the same place, right? But this has been moved down, and there's a pad of 50 pixels. Now, alternatively, just to show you, because I'd like you to learn this, what the differences are here, I'm going to change that to uh, margin top. And remember, margins occur on the outside of the div. So watch the difference. The positioning is going to be the same. So the, af you know, the, the end effect is really the same thing. But what happens here when I refresh? Oh, in this particular case, it's not because of the surrounding wrapper. So in this case, I'm going to need to use a padding top because margin top doesn't even do anything for me. What a margin top does differently, in, and it depends on what, what, the, what this uh, header left is contained within. Header left is contained within header, and so header also controls uh, header left's positioning and everything like that. 
so in, in some cases, a margin will actually bump things from the outside. A padding will, as you saw there, add padding to the inside. So that works just fine for what we're doing tonight. So what we'll do is leave that padding top as 50 pixels, remove our border, and our text positioning is going to be exactly where we want it to be. Uploading again just style.css because we're not actually changing anything in our HT, our PHP file. Okay, so now the positioning there is pretty good. Okay. All right, so I want to get a little bit further in the header. See if we can get some positioning done with our actual graphic as well. That's the uh, the Polaroid shot. You remember us working on that. So here we are in images. And again, you can download all these files at cat5.tv slash webdev. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slap that in. You know, I'm just going to grab that file, and I'm going to slap it into index.php just so that we can see exactly what's going to happen. Let's put it within our div. And logically, you're going to say, well, I want this to be to the right of make great things happen, right? So you're going to go, we remember how to do this, image img space src for source equals quote the location of the file that's relative to your index.php so that to me is I can do that dot slash images slash Polaroid or I could just do that either one is correct okay so that's calling that image and now if I close off that tag like that make it XML compliant with a slash because this is the end of the image tag. There's nothing further that happens for this tag, so I'm closing it off. Okay, now I can save that and upload index.php. Now if I refresh 005, you'll see that even though in my mind I would have thought, well, putting it to the right of that div should have put it over to the right, it's actually putting it after. And that, if you, do you remember what the cause is of that? Or do you, do you remember what we can do to fix it? Is that a float yes. left issue? A float. <laughs> Fantastic. Everybody at home answered the same thing. It's a float. At the same time. It's a float. Yes. <laughs> well done. OK, so there's a couple of things. And sometimes these things take experimentation. So the first thing I would try is I would add a float left to my header left. OK? And then upload my style.css. Now if I look at my file, I'm going to see what kind of effect that has. And it did do exactly what I wanted it to do. So I'm not actually having to specify float right for the other element, pardon me, because it's, uh, it's already floating right because it floats to the right of whatever the left element is. So we are golden there. Let's look back at our mock-up. Positioning looks, uh, looks about right. Yeah? Yeah, it looks good. Looks pretty good. OK, so now this is where things get really tricky, because now we've got an element on top of an element on top of an element. And now it's getting into the point where it's almost like layers in Photoshop or layers in the GIMP. And we're actually able to put these layers together on the web. And it saves so much space, because you remember how much space we were able to save by breaking up this particular image. We took that image that was like over 100K. <laughs> and took it down to like 40 or something like that. It was ridiculous. So it's definitely worth our time to do this. So let's see what we can actually do here. I'm going to go into images. There's the photo that we want to slap into our um, wrapper kind of thing for the Polaroid. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new div. And it's going to have the dimensions of this Polaroid ping. So I'm going to view that Polaroid ping, okay, and get my dimensions, which are 372 by 393. So I'm going to have to make a note of that, because I know I'll forget. So let's create the ID first. So an ID, again, we're going to go pound, and let's call this Polaroid, okay. And we're gonna go width colon, and then what did we say the width was? It is oh, where to go? There we go. 372 picks. 
three seven two picks. Height colon three ninety three picks. Okay, just like that. All right, so now we have that particular div. So no matter what we do, now let's do something here. Let's go background zero zero zero. I'm gonna just give it a black background so that when we place that div with that ID, we can see exactly where it's gonna land. So div ID equals ah, Polaroid. All right, let's cop. I'm gonna cut that image to my clipboard, or I can just you know I'll paste it after the site just to have it there. And now if I add a non-breaking space and then close my div, because we always close what we open. Okay. All right, so that's what it looks like at this point. Let's upload those two files that are affected there. That's index.php and style.css. And you'll see now we have this div, which is the same dimensions as that image, but it's just a black box. So what we want to do is we want to position that div properly, because that div is going to become our wrapping div for the Polaroid, so that we can keep all of the Polaroid elements within that div. Okay, you're gonna you, you'll understand what the purpose in that is, because really it's it's going to be the frame for that element, and then we're going to be able to put anything within that frame, and it's not going to fall outside of it. So it makes positioning a lot simpler. So with Polaroid, let's try float colon right. And we might have to do something that's going to look kind of strange. Let's see if this takes just as is. There we go. No, that looks pretty good. OK. So we're good. So now let's take this. Now that image that we have in our, at the bottom of our file right now, just as a placeholder. I'm going to do something a little different here. What we're going to do is we're not going to place it as an image. We're going to instead just grab that reference tag, so just the location of the image. I'm copying that to my clipboard, and then I'm going to delete this line because I don't need it. I'm going to go back to my CSS file. After saving index, I'm going to go to my Polaroid, and where it says background is black, I'm going to instead go background URL, and then paste in that reference. Images, Polaroid, underscore bg dot ping. Now what I need to do is go no dash repeat. Now of course the dimensions are exact so it's not going to repeat anyways but it's proper form to include the no repeat so that if for some strange reason something happens where it's going to actually end up looping the image you just don't want that to happen. So let's open our image, uh, upload our images, our files, pardon me, index and style. And if we refresh You'll see that that image is now there again, but it's, in fact, now it's not an image, it's a background image. See, there it is. Okay? So we can put anything we like on top of that. And because it's within a div container called Polaroid, we can also, we could just wrap anything we want in that div. So I could put text here. And if I upload that, Now all of a sudden, now it's, it's going to touch the edges because we haven't added any padding or anything like that. But within that element, there is text. If I color that black, just to kind of learn how this works. And you tell me if, if I'm getting redundant, but I, I want this to be... I, I like to learn the actual concepts behind, you know, how come this is working, how come this is doing it this way. So all I've done is I've colored it black, and I've added some padding there, just to show you that now if I upload the right file, of course, if I saved it, oh, didn't upload the right file, style.css, sorry gang. Are you laughing with me or at me? Oh, a little of both. Yeah, a little of both. Yeah, all right. What makes you feel better? I can accept that. Nothing makes me feel better. Ah, I'm both. Yeah, all right. 
essentially, though, we can see that what I've done there is put hello world within that. Also change some other things. So, all right. So here's where I'm going to fix my text size there. Reset, Control Zero. Here's something that takes some experimentation, but is kind of interesting. I'm going to take this float floating div, the Polaroid, and I'm going to change the order. I can actually put it before the one that's floating left. This is a cool trick for search engine optimization. You'll see what that's done there. Now, I'm what's happening here is that I've got two elements that are taking up the same amount, the the same space, and so it's saying, okay, this one's too wide to have this one within the header element. Because remember, header has a specified width. So we need to make these elements a little bit narrow, narrower so that they'll fit side by side. But what I'm showing you there is that the element hello world here can occur in the, in the code before the element which is actually showing first, if this was up here, which it can be if we just change the width a little bit. Um, so the search engines see it as the priority text even though it's occurring after in the visual representation of the site. So what we'll often do is we'll, for example, create a menu system that the, the menu could be on the, let's say the menu was the element that you want the search engines to pick up on. So we could put it on the right-hand side of the site, and yet in the code, it's at the very, very top of the code because floats and positions allow it to be wherever we want it to be in the code. It's no longer linear as HTML was, where you had to code it in the order in which it was to display. Uh, it's not like a table where you know it has to be the next TD because you can control it using floats. So very it's sneaky. Very, very sneaky. It could be very cool. Probably beyond the scope of tonight. But you can understand how that can be really helpful and awesome. All right, let's see where things are at here. OK. There we go. So if I remove the padding, then of course the text goes back to normal and hello world is up here and I can position within that. So what I want to do is I want to actually create a div that is within this image. Okay. So this here and we're going to place the Polaroid there and that's going to take us to the next step. It, it seems like it takes a bit of time to get through this, this header end of things. I think largely that's because we're learning you know, what do floats do, how do we position elements, and how do we uh, change our text. Once we get through this, which is going to happen next week, um, then we're going to be just rocking out the body of the, the website itself uh, because of the fact that uh, really, as we learn, we don't need to spend as much time on the, the mundane details. Uh, but I do want you to learn these things, and I, I think it's uh, I think it's uh, been cool for a lot of people to learn this stuff. So, pop me an email live at category five tv and uh, let me know if you have any questions. And certainly, if you have a viewer testimonial, I'd invite you to go over to category five tv and click on interact and submit a testimonial. Just a note: as you go over to cat five tv slash pogo plug to check out the pogo plug device, uh, we've got a couple of those to give away next week. And so I would encourage you to make sure that you're in the chat room. Drawbot just may be paying us a visit. And, uh, hint, hint. Yeah, hint, hint. <laughs> you don't want to miss out on that. Uh, Nua, definitely uh, mentioning the humblebundle.com. Humblebundle.com. We've talked about it in the past. Um, this is the Humble Frozen Bite bundle, which is a bundle of great games that you can purchase for basically any amount. So it's, uh, it's to help charity, and uh, it's a chance for you to get some cool games. And there is just one week left in order to actually purchase that, uh, that software bundle. I'd encourage you to check that out. It's humblebundle.com. And the links will be in the show notes for episode number 187, and of course, all of the links that we've mentioned tonight. And uh, there is, again, only one week uh, to get in on that, so make sure that uh, that you check it out. Ruve, you know we didn't even get. I, I didn't even get this. Just like, how's your week going? Things oh. going all right? Well, yeah, they're good. Busy. Yeah. Busy week. Yeah. So School that seems is just to be the, um, the norm, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's been busy. Oh yeah, school's been fun. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. How it's that you? time of year. How's your week? It's been uh, it's been good. I I've been really encouraging people to to get stuff in. One of the things when you get developing websites is you you learn that you, you really got to push to get content for from people, and uh, you know I don't mind that so much. But when you have a whole lot of websites that you're working on. And everybody is taking <laughs> months and months to get you stuff. W- what what people don't realize is that you start to lose track. Of, okay, well, where was I at with that project? We mm-hmm. started that, you know, six months ago, and then I never got any content for the site. Yeah, it's hard to pick up where you left it's, off. It's it's it becomes more work, really. So my my couple of weeks has been, you know, really pushing to get people to get content in, and and uh, it's starting to come about. But of course, because I've pushed so many people, all of them coming together at the same time. <laughs> Finally, I'm getting the stuff, and it's like, oh, Everything boy. Everything at once. Everything at once. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, everybody wants to know, well, when's mine going to be ready? I got you the stuff. When's it going to be ready? <laughs> well, yeah, okay. Got you on the schedule now. You're so we'll, we're going to, yeah, you're penciled in. <laughs> so we're going to get there. It's a good thing. But it's good. Everyone is equally as important. Everyone is. Except for me. <laughs> She's more important. That's what she's saying. <laughs> uh, I didn't know how to kidding, respond there. <laughs> uh, please do get onto our website, category5.tv. Uh, you're going to get us a bio, aren't you? Oh, well, you know, I thought about that today when I was heading she's out the door. She's as bad as Mr. Kid. <laughs> you thought about it on your way out the door. Uh, you know, final exams are almost done. Okay. I have one more Thursday, and then I All have right. a week or two off. You guys heard her. She's going to have and it here in four weeks. It. In four weeks. Four weeks. <laughs> got a week or two off. It shouldn't really take you a week or two to write. It might. It has to be clever it's and awesome and awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it will be. It will be. Or I can say it's going to be horrible and boring and then if there's yes. anything interesting then it'll be like way above everyone's Look at that. standards. Everybody will have such low expectations exactly, of you. Exactly. It'll just blow that, everyone away. Yeah, it'll be like, wow, <laughs> look at that bio. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'll get that to you. Uh, if people would like to encourage Krista to finish her, her bio, uh, as per Gadwill's <laughs> message here in the chat room, just pop an email to live at category5.tv. I will, uh, I will print 100 copies of every email that comes in, and I will stack it on her desk. I won't actually do Good. that because Friday's Earth Day. And I was going to so, say, it's a waste of trees. Yeah, no, I would never, ever do that. I don't even... Mm-hmm. I, I don't say, know maybe if you, you notice my the notepads notes, around then here. Then they could just like do a, a mark, a tick every time someone says it. Yeah, even my my notepads around here. Like I use every side of e- of every piece of paper, and then when I'm done, I like yeah, I'm just like I'm crazy that way. It's good, environmentally friendly. I try to be. Maybe category five should go we plant use, a tree. We use eco alkaline batteries for our microphones, which. Uh, are very cool. Ecoalkalines.com. Mm-hmm. These are environmentally friendly with zero percent cadmium. Zero percent lead, zero percent mercury, and they still manage to work. They work off fantastically. Of power. Do you remember, viewers, when we put this in the cordless microphone? We were having all kinds of trouble with the mic, and we said, "You know what? We're gonna okay. We're gonna do an experiment because the mic only lasted for one show every time on a battery. We put an eco alkaline in it, and last week the battery died. Wow! So, figure out when that was and how long that battery lasted for. That's fantastic. It's way better the life than the Energizer Bunny. It's fantastic. Like, the, yeah, it lasted so long in regular use conditions. It's like, and like regular room temperature use, it's cool. just the best. And they're, you know, they say, I, I'm still going to uh, put it through e waste because I'm sure that there are metals in here and stuff that they can recycle. Uh, but they are landfill safe, is what they say. Good. That's how environmentally friendly these are. But again, there's, there's some metals in there and stuff that I'm sure they can recycle at e waste. So. Pretty I'll cool. still take them in there. Yeah. So. Anyway. Nice having you here. Oh, it's good to be here. Yeah. Nice having everyone join us tonight. And uh, thank you everyone who has donated to the show so far to help us uh, to offset the expense of uh, purchasing a new server to get us uh, back up and running in full force. And uh, hopefully that will come together fairly fast. But I'm very pleased that tonight was operational and I hope that you enjoyed the show. And uh, we'll talk to you again next Tuesday night. Thanks for being here. Sounds good. See you guys. See ya.
Poppy.